students as we discussed about orbitals which are 1s 2s 2p 3s and so on but after the discussion of orbitals we need to discuss how these orbitals are filled that means how the electrons are filled in these orbitals for this some of the principles are used in order to fill the orbitals with electrons so we need to discuss these principles so in this video we are going to discuss the principles used in filling of orbitals the filling of orbitals is governed by following principles which are upper principle pauli exclusion principle hund's rule of maximum multiplicity let us discuss these principles in detail first one of power principle as we had discussed in the previous video also because of the difference in the energies of orbitals the filling of electron takes place not in the regular way so for this we need to learn this energy level diagram in which how we arrange this orbitals in the increasing order of energy so first of all you have to start with 1s that means the filling of electron takes place in first in 1s then you have to go in this way then 2s then you have to go in this way then 3 2p 3s you can see how the i'm making the pen here then 3s then after that it will go to 3p 4s then it will go to 4p 5s and so on so according to our principle first of all the filling of electrons in the orbitals that takes place first in the 1s then in the 2s then in 2p then 3s then 3p 4s and so on so that means the electron filling first start with the orbital which have lowest energy that is the lowest energy orbital that is a 1s then it will go to 2s 2p and so on so this chart was given in order to learn it very easily the order of filling and because there is a variation in the energy because of that reason we can say that the filling will takes place not exactly in the same way it will be in this way so you have to learn the sequence of filling of electrons for this the sequence is that is first the filling takes place in 1s orbital then 2s then 2p you can see it is in the same way after 1s then it is 2s then we have 2p that is 2p then 3s then there is 3p then it is 4s and so on so this sequence uh, you need to learn it and the sequence it should be in the same order after 1s it comes 2s then 2p then 3s 3p and you can see after 3p it is 4s instead of 3d it is 4s then only the 3d comes then 4p so this sequence you need to learn it so first of all you can learn with this in this way and later on once you get practice you can directly write this sequence from this for us the most important is up to till 3d because usually whatever atomic numbers till 30 to 30 we have only this much we required so at least you learn this much part of it so because of this only we can able to make the electronic configuration so you must need to learn this sequence so we can say that this is the sequence of filling of orbitals that means 
first this filling takes place in the lowest energy orbital then 2s then 2p and so on so whenever you are filling the orbitals first you will be going to fill the 1s then only the 2s then 2p 3s 3p and so on so this is what the upper principle says so the upper principle says in this way according to this principle in the ground state of atoms the orbitals are filled in the order of their increasing energies it means that in the ground state the in the atoms for the atoms orbitals are filled in the order of increasing their energies that means increasing their energy means first the filling takes place for lowest energy orbital then for higher 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 and so on so when you are writing the electronic configuration you need to fill the orbitals so where you going to start you must start with 1s then only you will be going to fill 2s then 2p then 3s and so on this is what the upper principle says according to upper principle in the ground state of atoms the orbitals are filled in the order of their increasing energy the word aufbau means in the german building up so the building up of the orbitals means the filling up of orbitals with electrons so from an energy level diagram it is clear that for multi electron atom this sequence is followed so we need to fill the orbitals in the increasing order of energy that means you have to fill in this direction first for this then this and so on this is what called as abro principle next poly exclusion principle here three points are bolded points so we need to discuss the three points separately so first of all discuss the first point that is no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers what this first point says no two electron in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers as we have discussed the four set of quantum numbers which are there that is principal quantum number asymmetric quantum number magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number so these are the four set of quantum numbers and the quantum numbers specify the position of electron so in the last video we discussed about the quantum numbers let us take one example for this explanation of this point for example aluminum atom have 13 electrons that is you know that it have 13 electrons which is bolded here if these are the electrons which is shown here for the aluminum atom so the quantum numbers that is principal quantum number represented by n asymmetric quantum number magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number so each electron will have certain values of n l m l and m s so if you uh, find out the value of four set of quantum number for this electron and when you compare with this electron it will be different when you compare for this then also it will be different when you compare for this it will be also different that means what it shows that uh, no two electron in an atom can have all the four set of quantum numbers equal that means in an atom all the electrons when you compare the quantum number values you will find that no two electron that means any electron does not have these values common that means they does not have the value all the four set of quantum number equal for any of the two electron
Thus, the poly exclusion principle, the first point it is clear, that is, no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. When we do the problem related to this one, then it will be more clear to you about this point. And this is only discussed after the electronic configuration topic when we discuss it. After that, we'll be doing a problem. On the basis of that, we can easily get clear this point. Next point in this, that is, only two electrons may exist in the same orbital and these electron must have opposite spin. What does this point say? Only two electrons may exist in the same orbital and these electron must have opposite spin. Let us discuss this point while making an orbital diagram. As I told you, the each box represent a orbital. So this is a 2s orbital, this is 2px orbital, this is 2py, this is 2pz and this all together called as 2p subshell. So in the case of orbital diagram as I told you for s we are making single box, for p uh, we are making three boxes because of three orientation. So the each orbital, this is a single orbital. So according to the Pauli exclusion principle, maximum two electron can be accommodated. That is maximum two means I am making an arrow sign which represents the electron here. The maximum two means now it is one is already filled here. That means one more possibility is there. And that electron will have opposite spin. Opposite spin that means one is in the clockwise direction which I represented by an arrow that is upward arrow shows it is in a clockwise direction and if I make downward arrow it shows that uh, that electron have a anti-clockwise spin. So this is the way of representing an electron in the orbital that means here the arrow marks are representing nothing but the electrons they are representing electron. So according to the Pauli exclusion principle the second point says that maximum an orbital can accommodate two electrons. That is one is in the clockwise direction, the other one is anti-clockwise direction. So the arrow mark you can make in this way also. Upward arrow mark can be made in this way. This is downward arrow mark. So no need to complete the arrow like this. If you want, you can make like this also. So it shows that maximum two electrons can be accommodated in a single orbital. But in the case of 2p case, we can say that there are three orientation, that is there are three orbitals, that is px, py and pz. So how we fill the electron in this? Let us do this one. One, two, three. There are three electrons in 2p subshell which is in the clockwise spin and there are 3, 1, 2, 3, total 3 electrons which have anti-clockwise spin. So we can say that there are total 6 number of electrons in the 2p shell, 2p subshell. So we can say that there are total 6 electrons can be accommodated in 2p from this 3 electrons have clockwise spin and 3 electrons have anti-clockwise spin. So that is all the second point of Pauli exclusion principle says that is only 2 electron may exist in the same orbital and these have opposite spin that means in the same orbital maximum two electron can be committed maximum that means one is also a possibility but maximum two can be accommodated and these two electron must have you can say must have opposite spin that means the first one should be made clockwise the second one should be made anti-clockwise 
and next point next point in the pauli exclusion principle is the maximum number of electrons in the shell with the principal quantum number n is equal to 2 n square that means the maximum number of electron in the shell that means when you find out the inner shell how much the maximum electron is present if the principal quantum number is n then the maximum number of electron will be equal to 2 n square so let us discuss this point with a chart in this table you can find out n is represented here that is the principal quantum number then l is represented that is azimuthal quantum number ml is the magnetic quantum number so as we have discussed in the quantum number n principal quantum number that is n it represent the orbit shell or the energy level l represent the subshell l represent the subshell that means whether it is s p or d etc and ml represent its orbital orbital means the particularly when we talk about the orbital will be making a box so we need to find out how many number of electrons are possible in the case of subshell and in the case of the shell so let us discuss first for the case of 1s now for the 1s we know that it is of s orbital so that means we have to make single box so here single box is there now let us fill the electron what the according to the principle pauli exclusion principle maximum two can be accommodated that is one is in the clockwise other one is in the anti clockwise as we know that in the first shell there is only one orbital that is 1s only one orbital is there that is 1s so in the 1s so we can say how many electrons are there maximum electron that is 1 2 so therefore two electrons are there so we can say in the first shell because there is only one s orbital so the total number of electron in the shell that is equal to 2 now let us take for the another case then we it will be more clear let us talk about the second shell second shell we know that uh, there are two sub shell that is 2s and 2p for the s we are making single box for the p we are making three boxes now let us we are talking about the second shell second shell means the principal quantum number is 2 so we are talking about the second row here in the table so we can say that there are two sub shell that is 2s and 2p there are two sub shell that is 2s and 2p now how we fill the electron in this so first for the case of 2s as total maximum electron can be accommodated is 2 so that is one is in the clockwise direction the other one is in the anti clockwise direction let us fill for the 2p one here that is in the clockwise one here clockwise clockwise electron anti clockwise anti clockwise anti clockwise so what we can say that uh, so in the case of um, 2s total maximum two electrons are there in the case of 2p maximum six electron are there therefore you got this value 2 here and six value got from here that is in the 2s maximum number of electron is 2 that is in the sub shell and for the 2p the maximum number of electron is 6 because these together is there in the second shell that is principal quantum number second so what we can say the total number of electron 2 plus 6 is equal to 8 so that's why in the second shell the maximum number of electron can be accommodated is 8 so that is about this table next in the case of a third shell third shell means the principal quantum number n is equal to 3 third shell we are talking about third shell that means we are talking about a third row here in the table third row so in the third shell there are three sub shell that are 
3s, 3p and 3d. Now make the orbital diagram for 3s single box, for 3p 3 box, for 3d it is 5 box. Now let us fill the electron according to the first point in the Pauli exclusion principle that is maximum two electron can be accommodated that means one is in the clockwise pin the other electron is in anti-clockwise pin so here you got the total number of electron in 3s that is equal to 2 now let us let us do for 3p in the case of 3p because there are three orbitals so here one electron one electron here one electron here and the one more electron in each but all they have anti-clockwise pin you can see here I'm making red color for the electrons which have clockwise pin and green color for the electron which have anti-clockwise pin now count the number of electron in this that is equal to 6 next when you do for 3d similarly one electron here 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 so like this electrons which are in the clockwise pin and electron in the anti-clockwise pin like this so when you count the total number of electron you will get total number of electron here that is 5 in the clockwise 5 in the anti-clockwise so total 10 now you make the sum of 2 plus 6 you can see this number 2 here this is this 2 then 6 then 10 so 2 plus 6 plus 10 that is equal to 18. Therefore the maximum number of electron can be accommodated in third shell that is 18. So maybe you have learned the sequence in the lower classes that in the K shell 2 electron is possible in the next that is 8, 18, 32 and so on. So from this it is clear that why it is 2, the why it is 8 in the next second why it is 18 in the third and so on. So similarly when you do for the next shell that is for the fourth shell when you do similarly so what you will get so total number of electron you can find it out when you find it out you will get 2 here and 6 here you will find 10 here and here because 7 box 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 box are there and each having four, 2 electrons so total 14 electrons are in 4F. So when you make the sum of all these you will get 32. So that is why the number of electrons are maximum electrons can be accommodated in the shell that is 2 in the first shell. 8 in the second shell, 18 in the third shell and 32 in the fourth shell. For this a formula is given that is according to the Pauli exclusion principle the formula is given as 2n square. This formula is given that means what is n here? n is the principal content number. So 2n square so let us do for the first one when you apply the formula Two, and what is n here n is equal to 1 so 2 into 1 square so what you get here that is 2 so you got this 2 value do apply this formula for the second shell what is the second shell for the second shell the value of n is equal to 2 so 2 into 2 square we are applying this formula we are applying this formula so what we get here that is 2 into 2 square so when you make 2 square into 2 what you'll get 8 so that means this formula is applicable for finding out the maximum number of electron in the shell so instead of calculating how we have done previously what you can do you can directly calculate the maximum number of electron in the shell by using this formula so if you want to find out for the fifth shell which is not given in the table how you find it out you just use this formula by keeping n is equal to 5 so that will give the maximum number of electron which can be accommodated in the fifth shell so this is the point 
which is described in the Pauli exclusion principle that is the maximum number of electrons in the shell of principal content number n is equal to 2n square. So we can use this formula where n is the principal content number and we can find out the maximum number of electrons in the shell. So that is the third point in the Pauli exclusion principle. Now one more principle is left that is Hund's rule. This rule says that the pairing of electrons in the orbital belonging to same subshell does not take place until each orbital belonging to that subshell has got one electron each that means singly occupied. This definition will not be clear. Let us take one example then only you will get clear about this rule. So let us take about a, a 2p subshell. 2p subshell here the filling of electron takes place in this way. Look at here how I am doing because 2px, 2py and 2pz all have same energy. When you say the energy 2s, 2px have same energy with 2py, have same energy with 2pz. They have energy same. That means they are the orbitals of same subshell. Which is the subshell here? 2p is the subshell. So 2px, 2py, 2pz are the orbitals of same subshell. Clear? So in this case, whenever the electron filling takes place, it takes place in such a way that here total 6 electron can be accommodated. So let us look at here how I am making the electron, how I am filling the electron. First the electron, first electron should be filled here. Now I am making the second electron. Second electron I am not going to make in this box. I will be making here. Then the third electron here and you can see all have same spin. First electron in the orbital must have the clockwise spin. Now the fourth electron. Fourth electron will be filled here and that is in the anti-clockwise spin. Fifth electron will be here. Sixth electron will be here. So this is the correct way of filling of electrons. In the case of uh, orbitals which have same energy. Once again we will make the structure. We'll, sorry we will make this filling here. So first the filling takes place here. Then here. Then here. Then next fourth electron will be on this side. That is on the Px which is in the anti-clockwise pin. Then in the 2Py. Then in the 2Pz. This is the correct way of filling of electron. Let for the case of an atom which have only 4 electrons. Let an atom which have only 4 electron in the 2p subshell. So how you fill the electron? They have total 4 number of electrons. So how you fill here? 1, 2, 3. Now where I need to make 4th one? Here. So this is what the rule says that the electrons are filled in such a way that all the orbitals of same subshell should be singly occupied. That means it should be first, it should be singly occupied. That means all should get single, then only the pairing will start. This is called as pairing. Pairing means Pairing of electron means after filling single single electron for each then only you have to fill the second electron. Yeah, then only you need to start the pairing. That is what this rule says. It can be better explained by an example. I am keeping an example here. For example, three students are sitting here. Here one, here one and here one. And if I have a 6 number of chocolate, then what I will be doing, first I will give 1 chocolate to the first child, 
first student then to the second then to the third then only i will give the rest of the chocolate in this way that means i should give one one to each then only the rest of the chocolate will be given so that is what the hohn's rule says that first the electrons are filled in such a way that first each should get single then that is singly occupied then only the pairing will start this is what the rule says that is hohn's rule so according to hohn's rule the pairing of electron in the orbitals belonging to same subshell that is important here same subshell does not takes place until each orbital belonging to that subshell has got one electron each that is singly occupied so i think it is clear from this uh, example that means all orbitals of same subshell should be singly occupied then only the pairing will start this is what the rule says hohn's rule so in this video we have discussed about the three rules which are used for governing which is governing the filling of electrons in the orbitals which are upper principle which says that the electrons are filled from the lower energy orbital to higher pauli exclusion principle says that maximum two electron can be accommodated in an orbital and that is one in the clockwise other in the anti clockwise and in the case of hohn's rule it say that all the orbitals of same energy should be singly occupied then only the pairing start this is all about this rule so in the next video we'll be applying this rule in making the electronic configuration for the different atoms so all of you go through this rule properly and go through the example which i have taken here so in the next video we'll be making electronic configuration and that is used on the basis of this principle thank you everyone